Hey everyone, Ryan here, and welcome back to our head and neck anatomy series. In this video, we'll talk about the muscles of the pharynx and the larynx. So just like the soft palate muscles, all of the muscles here are innervated by cranial nerve 10, or the vagus nerve, with one exception. And this time, the exception is innervated by the glossopharyngeal nerve, or cranial nerve 9. So we've broken these up into two categories, the pharynx, which is the back of the throat essentially, and the larynx, which is, which is the voice box a little bit further down. So let's talk about the muscles in each of these two categories. So first we'll talk about the outer circular layer of the pharynx. This picture is a posterior view, and we've removed the vertebral column so that you can see what's going on. You can appreciate the internal jugular vein, the common carotid artery that branches up into the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery, which you can't see here. We have the deep cervical lymph nodes, and those three things, the internal jugular vein, common carotid artery, deep cervical lymph nodes, along with the vagus nerve, those four components make up what's inside the carotid sheath that we talked about in our fascial space video. Here we have the esophagus, the thyroid gland peeking out on either side, and the trachea would be in front of those things blocked from this view. So these pharyngeal muscles are converging at the back of the throat. Up here we have the superior constrictor pharyngeal muscle, and that one attaches anteriorly with the buccinator muscle at the pterygomandibular raphae, and it attaches at the back posteriorly with the other side, so the right and left attached together along this pharyngeal raphae at the midline. And then of course we have the middle constrictor and the inferior constrictor down here. All three of these together function to involuntarily constrict the pharynx to propel a bolus or ball of food downward during the swallowing process. We also have the inner longitudinal layer, and there's some overlap here. These might sound familiar. The salpingopharyngeus muscle and the palatopharyngeus muscle we already covered in our last video on the soft palate muscles. Now here comes our exception. The stylopharyngeus muscle is the one muscle in this video that's not innervated by the vagus nerve. Now that makes sense because this muscle was the only one in our pharyngeal arch table from the very first video in the series that was listed in that row of pharyngeal arch number three. And the nerve of pharyngeal arch three is the glossopharyngeal nerve. So that makes a lot of sense why it's there. These three muscles together function to involuntarily elevate the pharynx during both swallowing and speaking. It also makes sense that there's some overlap here because those two muscles attach to both the soft palate up here and the, the pharynx down here. So it's, they're combined, they're involved with both of those structures because they attach to both of them. All right, and next, let's move to the larynx. So we have the posterior cricoarytenoid muscle. It originates from the cricoid cartilage and it inserts into the arytenoid cartilage. So that's why it's called cricoarytenoid, named for its origi origin and insertion. The action of this muscle is to abduct the vocal cords, which means move them away from the midline, thereby opening the airway at the glottis. So I remember that they abduct because these muscles down here kind of look like abs. So I remember abs and abduct. Next we have the oblique and transverse arytenoids, which are up here. The transverse are in this horizontal direction. The oblique are diagonally uh, oriented. They, or, they originate and insert into the arytenoid cartilage up here. Their action is opposite. They adduct the vocal cords toward the midline thereby closing up the larynx during something like coughing or swallowing. The cricothyroid muscle originates from the cricoid cartilage 
and it inserts into the thyroid cartilage. And I love how these names work out because they already kind of give away those first two key pieces of information. This muscle acts by tensing and elongating the vocal folds in order to increase the pitch of your voice or if you're singing to increase your pitch there. The, it's the only laryngeal muscle innervated by the superior laryngeal nerve instead of the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now, both of these are just two different branches of the vagus nerve, and all of the other intrinsic larynx muscles that we're talking about here are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. This one is the exception there. It's just innervated by a different branch of the vagus nerve, this guy right here. And finally, we have the thyroarytenoid muscle. This one originates from the thyroid, inserts into the arytenoid cartilage. Again, nice to match up with the name. The action here is the opposite of the last one. This one reduces the tension and shortens the vocal folds in order to decrease vocal pitch. Also listed here is the vocalis muscle. This is this really tiny strand muscle, uh, this strand-like muscle and it makes fine adjustments in pitch, whereas the cricothyroid and the thyroarytenoid muscles make larger scale changes in the pitch, the vocalis just makes little minor adjustments. All right, and that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it, and consider subscribing to this channel for more information on dentistry. If you're interested in supporting my channel and what I do, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you to all of my patrons here for all of their support. You can unlock extras like access to my video slides to take notes on and lots of practice questions for the board exam. So go check that out. The link will be in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.